Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. I'm tracking strong storms that should stick around throughout Columbus Day Monday. We now know the name of the Georgetown man killed in a crash this afternoon. I'm definitely going to be taking more precautions. It's something that's very scary. It's creepy that it's just a few houses down. A second person in the U.S. is diagnosed with Ebola. How health care leaders are working to prevent the spread of the deadly virus. WKYT News at 11 starts now. Good evening, I'm Kristen Kennedy. By this time tomorrow, we could see plenty of storm clouds rolling in, setting us up for a wet Columbus Day weekend. WKYT's Mike Linden is tracking those storm chances. Mike? Well, that's right, Kristen. It looks like it could be messy as we head into Columbus Day with the potential for severe weather, at least to kick off our work week. We're looking at some gusty winds, not only the heavy rain, but could potentially, again, be looking at a repeat of last week. Now, right now, checking out live first alert defender, most of what we were looking at earlier this evening has all but calmed down, although a few spots are still left rather wet right now, that being Perry County and Hazard, butting up against the mountains. We have a lot of wet weather currently over southeastern Kentucky. Now, if we head to the opposite side, actually southern Indiana, right over Louisville there, you can see that that cell right over the Vienna area there is quite potent. We're looking at those storms developing even more as we head into tomorrow because of energy coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. And currently, you can see that low sitting over the Dallas area as well, beginning to work its way closer to us. And it's that low pressure that's going to settle over Kentucky, bringing us that strong weather. Here is the threat that we're looking at. Any spot under that yellow overlay, mostly western Kentucky, but nonetheless, this is similar to the setup that we saw last week with the heavy rains, damaging winds and the hail. So coming up in about 10 minutes, here's what I'll be breaking down in my full forecast. The wet and, wind, wet and windy conditions, the potential for strong storms Monday, as well as the chance for severe weather into Tuesday. I'll be back in about 10 minutes with your full hour by hour forecast. Thank you, Mike. We are tracking a breaking news alert for you tonight. Right now, we know that fire crews and police officers are on the scene of a wreck in Lexington. We're going to go ahead and try and get a live look for you here right now at Eastland Parkway and New Circle Road. We're told that a minivan and a car collided. Now, two elderly women in the minivan, from what we're told, had to be pried out of that car. They were taken to UK Hospital. We're trying to get updates for you, and of course, we'll have much more information. You can see our crew is right out there. We've got that live picture for you right now. Crews in Scott County spent the afternoon cleaning up another deadly crash there. It's the third that they've had to deal with this week. Today's happened on Highway 460 this afternoon. Scott County Coroner says 44 year old Philip Tracy III from Georgetown died at the scene. WKYT Sam Smith. Talk to one man who tried to direct traffic before police arrived. He has our top story at 11. This road that connects Georgetown and Frankfurt has seen car accidents before. I've heard crashes toward Frankfurt, uh, the west uh, end of 460, but never on the uh, yeah, east end. Herdon Price has lived along 460 for 25 years and was home during the latest crash on this road. But when I was outside, I did hear a big loud bang, and that's what it was. At that time, I did not know it was a, a severe accident, which it was. Price lives near the crash site and helped divert traffic until first responders arrived. But I knew it was something bad. There were three vehicles and four people involved in this crash. The coroner says the driver of this Camry was Philip Tracy III of Georgetown. We're told he crossed the center line and sideswiped this pickup truck. The truck flipped on its side and caught fire. Tracy was killed in the accident. He died from blunt force trauma to the body. His mother was in the passenger seat. She's in critical condition. The driver of the truck has non-life-threatening injuries. Another car swerved to avoid wrecking, but that car slammed into a rock wall. That driver declined to be transported. That's one of the most horrible things that can happen, and uh, our thoughts and prayers are with them. In Scott County, Sam Smith, WKYT. Well, and Kentucky State Police are continuing to investigate a deadly fire in McCrary County tonight. 
They say they found three people in the bedroom of a home that was on fire on Sycamore Trail in Whitley City. Police believe David Perkins, Lisa Perkins, and Shaylin Crabtree all died from smoke inhalation. Right now, police do not suspect foul play, but they are still trying to figure out what started the fire. Laurel County deputies are investigating a crash on US 25 that happened this weekend. They say a woman got out of a car that was sitting idle on the side of the road and ran into the middle of the highway where a second car hit her. Deputies arrested Rhonda Klaus, Chad Martin, and Timothy Ayers. They are facing intoxication charges. We're told the victim was arguing with her husband, Chad Martin, when she left the car. Crews airlifted her to UK hospital with serious injuries. Police are calling him a sexual predator. Friday, Lexington officers arrested Grant Bertram at a home on Scottish Trace. They say Bertram traveled from Kentucky to Florida, where he had sex with a girl between 12 and 16 years old. Florida detective working the case says the two met at an online game site called World, World of Warcraft. Families who lived only a couple doors down from Bertram in Lexington are worried for their children's safety. It really pulls the carpet out from under you. It makes us rethink our strategies now for, you know, protecting our children and, and what we need to do for, you know, our neighborhood. Bertram is scheduled to appear in court tomorrow for an arraignment. He's being held in the Fayette County Detention Center on a $200,000 bond. Three people involved in the shooting of a Danville clerk will face a judge tomorrow. Rico Penix, Robin Adams, and Patrick Brand will be arraigned tomorrow at 10. The three are charged with robbery and assault after police say they shot 21-year-old Zoe Reed during a robbery last month. A second person in the U.S. now has Ebola. Doctors confirm a Dallas healthcare worker picked up the virus after caring for the Liberian man who died from Ebola last week. President Obama is now implementing new protocols to prevent the virus from spreading. Brian Webb has the latest. A hospital worker treating Ebola patient Thomas Duncan was infected with the virus while wearing a mask, gown, gloves, and other protective clothing. If this individual was exposed, which they were, it is possible that other individuals were exposed. Health officials believe the worker somehow breached protocol and are trying to determine exactly what happened. One of the areas that we look at closely are uh, things like uh, how you take off the gear that might be infected or contaminated. The name of the female patient has not been released. Crews started cleaning outside her apartment building and planned to clean inside on Monday. City workers went door to door handing out flyers to alert neighbors. I'm definitely going to be taking more precautions. It's something that's very it's scary. It's creepy that it's just a few houses down. Concern over the spread of the virus was evident across the nation. In Massachusetts, a medical clinic was shut down briefly when a man who recently returned from Liberia complained of a headache and muscle aches. He was transferred to a hospital for tests. And in Los Angeles, hazmat teams surrounded a plane from New York that landed with a sick passenger. Airport police say the man had flu-like symptoms, but they don't believe he was ever exposed to the Ebola virus. Brian Webb for CBS News, New York. The CDC is making new recommendations for the Dallas Hospital, including using as few people as possible to treat victims. Adair County families who knew Captain Tony Greider will take to the basketball court tomorrow to raise money for his family. They're participating in the annual Adair County Emergency Services basketball game. This year, all proceeds will go to the Greider family. Greider died last month after being injured during an ice bucket challenge. He and fellow firefighter Alex Quinn were helping the Campbellsville University Band complete the challenge when they got too close to nearby power lines. The game starts at 7 at Adair County High School. Admission is $5. Families across the state are still cleaning up from this week's severe storm damage. The Better Business Bureau continues to encourage homeowners to watch out for traveling scammers. Just this week, the BBB sent out an advisory asking those in Harrison and Bourbon counties to do their homework. People who won't give you anything in writing, uh, maybe they urge you not to check them out with the Better Business Bureau. Uh, they're vague when you ask for information. Above all, if they want all the money up front, if you're paying cash, run away. That's a definite red flag. The Paris city manager says their severe storms Tuesday destroyed two homes in the Claysville neighborhood. Local celebrities got to battle in the saddle tonight. 
The annual Celebrity Team Penning event pairs two amateur riders with a celebrity guest rider. Guests included WKYT zone Deanne Stevens. She helped one team trying to pen a group of cattle the fastest. Well, the Battle of the Saddle is a family fun, friendly event. And it brings people that um, know horses and don't know horses together to benefit the horse park and to do something that's crazy and most people have never done or seen. All money raised tonight benefits the Kentucky Horse Park. Eastern Kentucky's bike and horse trails can be beautiful to explore, but also dangerous if you're not careful. Today, emergency crews from McGoffin and Johnson counties met on the Dawkins Line Rail Trail near Paintsville to train for scary situations. Sean Barry watched crews practice rescues. With the addition of the Dawkins Line Rail Trail in Johnson County, emergency crews now need to be more alert than ever. We're trying to prepare for an incident with uh, both a bicycle and a uh, horse rider combination. Paintsville Emergency Management Director Gary McClure led a training exercise on the trail Sunday, testing local emergency crews' abilities to rescue large animals and people from the trail. This has given uh, these first responders an opportunity to get out and do some actual hands on on the trail. Though the trail is just one year old, only one accident has been reported, a bicyclist. Still, emergency crews in Johnson and McGoffin counties feel the need to prepare. You know, it, it's kind of eye-opening when you actually get out here, you know, on the scene and you're having to deal with this terrain and this location, you know, where you're having to use ATVs to access, transport patients. More tourists are expected to travel to the trail in the coming year also. Yeah, last year it's been... Uh, been open. We've seen a, a big uh, uh, amount of uh, people coming through from a variety of counties throughout the Commonwealth. Crews hope, however, that the training learned here will never be needed. In Johnson County, Sean Barry. In all, crews rescued two stranded bicyclists and one 600 pound fake horse. Students in northern Kentucky will have to celebrate their birthdays without cake. The Kentucky Inquirer reports Burlington Elementary School is now one of several schools with a no food for birthdays rule. The woman in charge of making sure the wellness policies for Boone County Schools meet federal guidelines says 37% of the county's children are at risk of being obese.